Hi friends, does this sound familiar? You're trapped in a series of endless cycles confined to a void of despair and shame. Desperate to escape the darkness, but you have no clue where to begin. Well, my guest today is no stranger to that pit of despair or the light at the end of the tunnel. Dr. Tracy Strawberry's testimony is the incredible story of an overcomer. When Christ came into her life, he walked her through the battles of addiction, dysfunction, and fractured relationships. These were once strongholds for her, but they became the platform that she uses to set others free. In her new book, The Courage to Heal, she outlines the healing process and offers practical steps to get free and stay free. Join the conversation as Tracy shares principles from her new book and shines a light on the road to recovery. We are back with my dear friend, Tracy Strawberry, Dr. Tracy Strawberry, actually, and my friend, I'm so glad that you are on the show with me again today. I'm so honored that you're here. Brenda, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it so much. Yes, well, we're gonna talk about your brand new book, uh, The Courage to Heal. And this is such an important topic right now for so many people. And uh, mm -hmm. I really just want to jump in a little bit first to your story. You are the wife to the famed baseball player, Daryl Strawberry, and the two of you together work with addiction recovery. Uh, you have quite a story. It's a powerful story. And uh, mm -hmm. fill us in a little bit for our audience today on uh, how God brought you through your own journey of healing and what inspired you for this book. Absolutely. Thank you, my friend. You bet. You bet. Um, there were several life events that happened for me. I was raised in a wonderful home in a Christian home, but sometimes things happen to people. And those are the things I want to talk about today. You know, I was molested when I was eight years old by a neighbor across the way. And I would get into seeking out relationships with boys at a young age, things of this nature, trying to cover up what had happened to me when I was eight. I would spiral out of a room because I'm holding a secret that I'm afraid to tell. And these secrets that we keep on the inside of us and traumas that we experience will continue to manifest in our life and grow and fester and grow and fester and choke out the greatness that God has put on the inside of us. I would eventually get married and that would fix it. I had three children with this man. I would end up divorcing, remarrying quickly, divorcing again, and then I would meet my husband, Daryl Strawberry, but by the time I met Daryl, I was lost in a full-blown addiction, divorced twice, three beautiful sons that I was for custody of, that I would eventually lose um, custody of my boys because of active addiction and alcoholism. So that's, that's the trauma and that's the nightmare of the story, but you and I are here to talk about hope. You and I are here about healing. You and I are here to talk about the one true God with practical implication that will set anybody who's listening free. Amen. And we share so much in common, both of us with our backgrounds. I too share the experience at eight years old of having been sexually assaulted. And, you know, I think that what happens with identity uh, at such a young age it, it just sets us on a path for, uh, and I say this for our viewers today, that we often are making choices in our life that we can, we tend to be maybe in, in uh, afterwards, we're, we're ashamed of those things in, in retrospect, but then we don't often understand the, what's involved and why we made those decisions. And so that That's requires right. really that we unravel the package a little bit and go do that deep inner work. So tell us about um, what this book is really spotlighting uh, to help people open up that healing journey because it's a difficult journey yes. in some ways. It is. Healing is always painful. And that's what people need to know right up front. That's why people get the process. So the book is about the pathway to healing step-by-step -step instruction of how we seek God, hear his voice, but also practical steps and application of how we get to that inner healing. And you said something to my dear friend that, you know, those core 
things, those core issues. We make decisions, we make choices on the inner brokenness that produces dysfunctional loving and dysfunctional living. And we really want to love and we really want to live right. So many people do, I do for so long. It's not a matter of want. Desire is free. Desire comes from God for us to love and be loved. That's why we don't have to love so hard. But here's the difference, Brenda. Do you have the ability to love? That's the difference. Desire is free. Ability is not. Ability has to be developed. And when things happen in our lives, it takes that ability. We have traumas, a brokenness. We're trying to love from a wounded place, which is a very dangerous place, and it's a frustrating place, wondering why we can't love and we can't get to the other side. I answer a lot of the questions in the book. I'm very real. I'm very raw. We get into the deep things. You know me. We get down to the deep things because it's time for people to be healed and hold the way God created us to be. Yes, it is. And you know, you, you, as you were talking about that, you know, what that looks like when we say we come from a wounded place in terms of love and in our relationships, um, we're actually not understanding that love does not do some of the things that abusive people who were supposed to love us and care for us or protect us have done. And so we get these mixed messages about authority figures or, you know, our interrelational uh, dynamics. And we think yes. early on that it's those things are okay or and we allow our boundaries are skewed so uh, talk that's about true. boundaries i mean that's where it, it really takes a lot to change your mindsets and to begin to yes. respect yourself enough to love mm -hmm. yourself the way god loves you to see yourself through that filter let's talk about yes. that absolutely and there's an entire chapter and then some in the book about boundaries learning your value and your self-worth no matter what you've been through, what you've done, you are valuable and it's never okay for someone to hurt you or harm you. That is very clear in his word that we are to guard our heart above all else because out of it springs forth every issue of life. It's very clear how we're supposed to treat one another. And if that's abusive behavior, whether it's verbally, physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever the case may be, it's never acceptable. I talk about and I teach about that mindset in the book of how women and men accept unacceptable behavior because you don't know your value, you don't know your worth. There's courage, right? Courage is the mental ability in the spirit, the capability inside of you to be able to stand up for yourself and say, this is not acceptable. I will love you, but I will not tolerate this behavior because it's usually never about love. But what it is about is I love you, but I will not tolerate this behavior because love does not look like this, sound like this, or act like this. It's never okay to hurt one another. That's not okay to do. So I give specific guidelines in the book about, let's just say adultery, for example. If you're married to somebody committing adultery and you're pleading for your marriage, I love you, but we're sleeping in another bed until this is over because you're not going to bring home AIDS or sexual diseases to me or anything of that nature, just to let you know, this is not okay. You are no longer going to speak to me like this. If we're on the phone together and you speak to me like this, I'm picking up the phone and that's just what's going to happen. You have a parent relationship where it's difficult to go to events or holidays, things of that nature. And what I teach in the book is to have a pre-conversation. You sit down, you write down things, uh, I'm sorry, on a piece of paper, step-by-step, reevaluate the situation, writing down your paper. For example, we will no longer come to Christmas anymore if there's excessive drinking and belligerent behavior. I'm protecting myself, my children, my child. We love you, but we are not attending. The hardest thing about boundaries, Brenda, is when you put your stake in the ground and you say, I am no longer going to tolerate this. The enemy comes in like a raging flood. And it's painful and it's hurtful because the relationship that you're supposed to experience love in is not happening. So there's a sacrificial frame where you have to accept you're not going to have that love. You may have to give up a relationship with boundaries relationship you may not be able to be in the presence of that person at the time 
very hurtful and it's very painful, but it's very necessary so you don't lose yourself. I like to say this statement in my book, you're going to learn how to love without losing yourself. Good. Okay. So many people, and, uh, and I think even for myself early on, as I was trying to establish new boundaries in my life, which is an ongoing process, um, yes. it, it's easy to trade uh, a, an honorable, respectable, graceful boundary uh, that's operating in love, as you were just pointing out, with an excuse to be angry, and then you get caught up in the drama of fighting with people all the time because you're just trying to express, express your boundaries. So let's talk about maybe what's the practice of operating from a place of love and safety and trust. I mean, I think that takes personal growth, but how do we get there instead of being coming at it from a place of fear where we're just, we're putting up our guard and, and, and our walls with everybody. Uh, how do we do this respectfully? Well, let me address safety, first of all, because a lot of different people are watching this right now. If you are in an abusive relationship and you are afraid of the relationship with the person that you're in, you need additional help. I'm going to tell you right now, please seek additional help so you can get in a place where you and your family are safe, because that's never okay. To have such a fear factor to where someone is tearing you down, that's not okay with God. You don't have to sit and be the victim wife, the victim husband, or the victim child and just take this and take this, get safe. Now, from a perspective of anger where it's uncomfortable, there's a difference between abuse, fearful abuse, and being uncomfortable. Being uncomfortable and being sorrowful is normal. You have to establish a boundary. You can keep your peace by telling the person that you love, again, having that pre-conversation, that predisposition of this is what we're going through, this is what we've been through. When this happens or if you do this, this, and this, this is how I am going to respond. I'm going to hold my peace. If peace is not held, I'm going to walk away. I'm going to hang up the phone. Whatever the case may be, the most important thing is to have the pre-conversation, the pre-understanding of who's going to do what, and when the boundary is passed, this is what that's going to look like. And that's a whole lot of heartache and headache because now you don't have to have this emotional response. You already had a conversation during a non-emotional time. You've established the boundary, you've established the trespass, you've established what's going to happen when the trespass happens. Now simply operate in that thing. You will feel emotion strong, but you can be solid in your decision already made it before the emotion presents itself. It tempts you to have a reactionary position where the fighting and the yelling and the screaming goes on. That doesn't help and it, it just doesn't it hurts. It doesn't help. Yeah, would you say that that it, when we do get caught up in the frenzy of the emotions, we're absolutely mm -hmm. not communicating what we're actually wanting to communicate. It's not going to be heard. And then that puts us in a more vulnerable spot of mm -hmm. actually uh, falling back in, in, into old patterns again. Um, yes. You know, Tracy, I, I've watched you guys walk this out and be such a light to a huge community now. And uh, I'm just so grateful for people like you who are true overcomers. And you can honestly say, listen, we know what it's like to be in that gutter of emotions, to be in that gutter of destroyed uh, relational dynamics, to walk in the place of regret and, uh, and, and painful things, but you also know what it means to face that pain and to find the beauty on, that lies just on the other side of suffering. We're gonna come right back and Tracy has a whole lot more to share with us, so don't go away. Paul and Brenda Crouch here. Baby, we have great plans coming yeah, we up. <laughs> we do. We're here in Anaheim at our beautiful studio that God has provided, but what do we have coming up? We've got amazing content coming up that we're actually very excited about. We just finished season four, and we have plans to do some broadcasting from around the world, mm -hmm. uh, different locations, and God's opening doors for us. Amen. 
but they say you have not because you ask not. And in four years, we have never asked for a donation or any yeah. kind of support, and now we are. It's our heart to see that media is done right and that we give God glory for everything. And we just are following the call and we're doing it honest. And uh, we hope that you will catch the vision and ride this wave with us and know Amen. that it, God is going to continue to pour more and more out as we follow in obedience to him. Amen. Go to Brenda's website. There's all kinds of resources there for giving. God bless you. BrendaCrouch.com. If you're just joining us, we are talking with Dr. Tracy Strawberry about the courage to heal. And uh, Tracy, I want to ask you how important trust or uh, the rebuilding of trust is and forgiveness. How do we get there when we've been so betrayed and so hurt by, by others that we've loved? Absolutely. First of all, forgiveness is the gate for the healing. So many people try to rebuild trust while withholding forgiveness. It doesn't work that way. So when we forgive, believe it or not, forgiveness is the quick decision. It's the quick process. So forgiveness is immediate, like Jesus teaches us in the Bible. What we're struggling with is not forgiveness. It's healing and it's rebuilding trust. Healing takes time. Rebuilding trust takes time. One thing I talk about in the book, Brenda, is you cannot rebuild trust with someone who is stuck in a cycle of sin. That's the person who can say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You have to use discernment because their behavior will prove whether or not their statement is true and what they're saying to you is true. And if they keep trespassing and doing the same thing over and over again, you have to love from a distance with the boundaries. Now, when it comes to time to rebuild trust, you have to sit down and have those difficult conversations and say, for example, I forgive you but I don't trust you and it's going to take time for you to heal. For instance, Al and I overcoming adultery and addictions, trust was broken in severe ways. So we had to sit down and come up with three ways. I like using three so people don't get overwhelmed. Number one, it was the phones were always out. And we always had access to the phone because what are we doing? There's no secrets. There's no secrets. We have five different people that have access to all of our social media. We share one email. So every, we have different people, including my sister and our executive assistant that have access to the back end because that was such a deep betrayal in our marriage. So we set up these different, different boundaries and different things that we had to do. When I called, he answers his phone. Same thing. When he called, I answer my phone. And if you can't answer it quickly, you call that quickly. I know that sounds silly, but the Bible says it's the little foxes that pull the vine. So you can, when you begin to trust in the smaller things, it adds up to the bigger things. This is the pathway to rebuilding trust. So I don't want people to use that three chapters on trust, forgiveness, boundaries, and, and rebuilding that trust. And that's really pathway to healing. It's, you don't just forgive and that's it. Forgiveness is the first step. And so we have to evaluate the situation, establish boundaries where they're needed, have those hard conversations and put a plan in place. So good. So much wisdom in that. And I know people are really getting um, a lot of encouragement today as they're watching because they have so many questions about how do I get out of this, these dynamics? And, you know, there, it's not as easy uh, when you're in the middle of it and you can't see the forest for the trees. But, you know, oftentimes when we're discouraged, we, we, you, you talk about this in your book, the tem when tem the temptation to quit comes calling. Uh, yes. Let's go there because... That temptation to quit hits all of us on many different levels, no matter what mm -hmm. we're doing, whether we're breaking addiction, whether we're moving forward in progress with, with something that we're called to do. Let's go there. Absolutely. The temptation to quit will come. It's not a matter of if, it's when. And why is it, why do you want to quit? Because healing is painful. Restoring relationships is painful. Breaking off an addiction, a habit, a life pattern, it's difficult and it's painful. Also, healing requires making choices 
that are difficult. We know, Brenda, down in our soul, the hard things, the hard decisions that we have to make, we just don't make them because we know they're going to bring more pain, which doesn't feel like you and it produces fear. We don't know what's going to happen once we put it when we have to let go, if I let go of this person, will they come back? Are they going to heal? Yeah. That's where we have to trust God, trust the process. He knows best. He has everything that we could ever want or desire in the palm of his hands. We've got to walk through the pain, not let our feelings lead the way. You're going to feel what you feel, but you know in your heart what's right. Make the right decision. Pick up the book. I talk about this a lot. That encourages me. We have to press through the pain. It's going to be difficult. Otherwise, we'd all be healed by now. Don't quit. The miracle's waiting. Don't quit. God's very best is on the other side of it. Don't quit. That's the pressure. That's the fire that we feel. You have to walk through it, and your breakthrough and your freedom is on the other side of that. Oh, so true and so rich. I can't, I, I, there are countless times in my own life and testimony that. I've experienced that very thing so I can attest to what you're saying and, oh. and be a witness that it is the truth that if, we, if we'll just continue to stay in a place of trust, we go through these liminal spaces when we've entered the unknown and yes. it's dark there. It, it's like the cocoon of the butterfly. You know, we're forming, it's a formation process. We are becoming and we are learning and we need a new roadmap as Dar Dr. Mark Sharona likes to say in that dark woods. But you know, yes. I think it, it's easy. That's where the enemy comes to try to discourage us and take us out. Mm -hmm. But if we can yes, continue yeah, to yeah. place our tr trust in the God who heals, and uh, mm -hmm. Tracy, you, you have a, a doctorate in theology, you know that our, our whole model for relationship is based on the triune God, the Father and the Son mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit. But if we mm -hmm. can't heal on this journey, we can't get to that place of, you know, without that faith, we can't do the forward thinking that, that you say mm -hmm. is so important. Let's yes. talk about forward thinking and why it's so crucial to the journey of not getting stuck as we set our hand to the plow, so to speak. Yes. <laughs> forward thinking is very important, especially when you're trying to overcome your past or move past the very thing that can hurt you and harm you. Not quitting is so important because if you quit or you don't make the choices you know you're supposed to make, produce a self-betrayal with yourself. And those are some of the hardest things to get past. Now, the forward thinking is this. Yes, go to counseling and seek godly counsel and talk about the past. But the purpose of talking about the past is to find out where it went wrong so we can course correct. But if you're sitting in therapy for years and years, and years talking about the past and rehearsing the past, you are not moving. You are stuck. You are having with the past. You are embracing that as your identity. Forward thinking is this. Forward thinking is new steps, walking down a new path. God, what new idea do you have for me? God, what pathway do you want me to pursue? Maybe it's a college course. Maybe like you, Brenda, going back to school. What is a forward thinking pathway? Maybe it's I need to hang around with these new friends. I need to try something new. I need to get in that Bible study that I don't feel comfortable getting in the middle of. I need to go out with those, those healthy friends and start doing new things. Pick up a new hobby. The way you get past the path is to move away from it with forward thinking, new direction, new ideas, God ideas, embracing joy, fighting for that joy. Pursuing peace and pursuing purpose. What has God called you to do? The Bible is very clear. God created each and every one of us with different talents on the inside of us. Get busy spending time discovering and developing those gifts and talents. Instead of rehashing your past, staying in that pain. You have to, while there's pain going on, you have to pick up the joy. While there's pain going on, you have to pursue peace. While you're looking at the have to pursue the future. God, what do you have for me? People, we're fearfully and wonderfully made. There's such great 
on the inside of us. Run after that like crazy. Go for it. Get everything that God has for you and start putting those pieces together with forward thinking and letting go of that. Mm, so good. You know, you're, what you're talking about is that there's a difference between acknowledging the pain that you need to move for, past. Because if, yes. if, we get, if we bury the pain, then, then we give power to it. So we right. have to go through, we have to confront the pain, we have to face it, but we don't have to do that alone. We do that with the person of Christ, the Holy Spirit, who is Amen. the healer and the counselor. And doing that in the presence of good counsel, good mentors is so critically important to the journey. But there's a difference between facing that to move forward and setting things in place to move forward and rumination. If we're just yes. ruminating on and hashing out, like, you know, my old habit was to lay in bed at night and just ruminate on all the things that, you know, they were tearing me up. That's called torment. And right. so learning the difference and discerning the difference when there is a, a lying spirit that's attacking your mind, mm -hmm. this is why it's important to grow in the word of God. So, yes. you know, I think uh, we're, Learning to be able to shut that down, isn't that kind of a self-discipline, Tracy, that, mm -hmm. that you would say we have to learn some new ways of thinking, get a new mindset? Yes. Would you minister to somebody right now? I feel like there's somebody that's struggling. In the next mm -hmm. minute, I just would like for you to minister to somebody that's, that's really feeling hopeless right now. Um, Absolutely. And they, uh, you have that anointing on you to minister, and there's somebody that is uh, yes. really in despair, uh, take a minute yes. to do that. Absolutely. First of all, you're worth it. And the Bible says, let God change you into a new person by changing the way you think. You need to start saying positive words about yourself. I'm going somewhere. God, where am I going? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That's why it's important to have brothers and sisters in Christ around you because they're not going to let you sit in that darkness because they're going to speak life into you. Get around godly counsel and godly people. Get in the word of God. If you're new to the word of God and you don't understand it, that's why it's important you go to church, get into a Bible study. Start asking God, why did you create? What is my purpose? Because that's a given. You don't have to ask whether or not he's created you with greatness and has a purpose and a plan for you. Start figuring that out. You're feeling your greatness and feeling joy. Instead of reminiscing over things like, oh, my husband's cheating. Oh, my God, he did it again. And my question to you is, what are you going to do about it? You can't change anybody but you. So what steps are you going to take to change you, to bring your happiness, to bring your happiness because you're worth it? You don't have to sit there, buy my book, go through it page by page, start putting the practical application to it, and you will come out on the other side because you are worth it. God is a great healer. Amen, amen, amen. I love you, my friend. I wish we had uh, another hour to be able to talk about this, but thank you for being with us today. I know people were ministered to deeply. I pray that so. I love you, friend. Thanks for having me. Love you too. And my friends that are watching, thank you so much for joining with us. We never take that for granted. And we hope you were encouraged today Join us again next time on Inside Voice. I'm Brenda Crouch.